Welcome back to Force Education, this is Zed. Today we are talking about BNNO Genomics, giving you all the updates about this one, institutional interest, technical analysis, and any latest SSC filings that you might have missed. So let's jump right into this one. So BNNO Genomics. I covered this one a few times before. The previous video is in the description below, but it's a little bit outdated since it's back from January. And what we're going to do today is we're going to look a little bit into the latest news all the way back to a little bit of January. Now, I'm not going to go through a lot of the details on each of them unless we need to, because the titles usually are enough to tell us about what's inside. So, Bionanogenomics announces preclinical evaluation of optical genome mapping by the Foundation for Bionic Com Competence. So this one here, FEC is a non-profit organization providing pre-implementation embryos diagnostics tests for patients who are undergoing in vitro fertilization. So that looks very interesting, honestly. And then Bionanogenomics announces record number of presentation on the optical genome mapping and structural variation at 2021 clinical genetics meeting of the ACMG. And basically, it's talking about some of the efficiencies regarding there, whether it's P EP085 efficient workflow for detection of clinically relevant uh, abnormalities in leukemia, according to NCCN guidelines, or EP068, which is optical genome mapping, detects rare genetic drivers in the periodic B lymphoblastic leukemia. So let's go on over there with other different um, things that BioNanogenomics, the, their device Sapphire is good at. And then BioNanogenomics announces the presentation, all right? BioNanogenomics announces continued global expansion in the adoption of its Sapphire pro program with addition in, of Indelo Bio in South Africa, bringing advanced genetics analysis to Africa. So that's an expansion towards a different other continent, and that's actually bullish. You know, Africa is not just one tent in the middle of a desert. It's actually pretty advanced in some places. Publication outlines potential for optical genomes mapping with Bionana Sapphire system to the foundation of new workflow in perinatal genetic testing. Um, I think this speaks for itself, and then we move on further as well. Bionana Genomics to present several upcoming conferences. Yep. Um, and then Bionano. A customer's Praxis Genomes receives DEX Z codes from Palmedio for their whole genome analysis LDT on Sapphire. And then it goes back on. And the thing that I'm just trying to outline is, well, they do have a lot of news. A lot of them are not really related to exactly investors, but to showcase their Sapphire product. And their Sapphire product is great. Now, they did have an offering back on January around $200 million, and then they did upraise that one to around $350 million later on, and I'll show you that in a minute. So, they technically have a lot of capital, a lot of cash hold afloat, and so for here on here, you get to see on January 19th, he did have uh, the $200 million. Here, you're talking about the March 31st or sorry, March 23rd, having an aggregate offering price up to $350 million through Cohen. The shares will be offered and sold uh, to the company's shelf registration statement, um, and it will be automatically effective on March 24th. So basically, $350 million is not currently raised based on this March 23rd. We'll look into other SEC filings to get a bit more of an understanding there. And so from the latest ones, this is a proposed maximum offering on the 24th, as we did talk about. Uh, this SEC filing also proposes that. They do have an employee equity incentive plan that goes up to almost $87 million. And some of the recent corporate highlights. Since the start of 2021, the company raised approximately $335 million from two underwritten public offerings of its share of its common stocks. The utilization of its $40 million at the market facility and the exercise of outstanding warrants. The company completed the acquisition of diagnostic services provider Lingnan as an important step towards accelerating the clinical adoption of Sapphire for digital cytogenetics and expanded Linogen's diagnostic testing menu with the launch of Linogen's now the gene panel test that identifies the genetic conditions related to epilepsy and the company enhanced its senior management team with the appointment of Christopher Stewart as the chief financial officer and Dr. Alka Shabi as the chief medical officer. 
some of the financial highlights in terms of revenue. So revenue for the fourth month or the fourth quarter, my bad, of 2020 worth four million dollars. That's an increase of $1.2 million, or 43% when compared to $2.8 million for the same period back in 2019. The increase was primarily due to $1.1 million increase in service revenue contributed primarily to or by our Lincoln subsidiary. Now, just skimming here, revenues for the year ended in December 31st was $8.5 million, down 1.6 compared from 10.1 in 2019. And before we move on further towards institutional interest, some other SEC filing, what I would ask you to love for you to do is scroll down a little bit below. There's a subscribe button there. Click that and the notification button on there. If you'd like to join our Discord, you can scroll all the way down. You'll find join me on Discord on here. Click on that. You'll be directed to our free Discord, and I'll talk about that a little bit later at the end of the video. And so some of the other things here. So some of you might ask, well, what is Sapphire? And here's the best thing that I did find based on a 10K form that they do have there. We develop and market Sapphire system, a complete sample to test res result solutions for structural variations analysis in OGM that empowers comprehensive genome analysis and facilitates a deeper understanding of genetic variations and functions. We believe it is the only solution capable of addressing the needs for structural variation analysis because it's highly sensitive. It's, it's more sensitive uh, detecting structural variations larger than 500 basis pairs uh, currently on the market. Highly specific, uh, the currently false positive rate is typically less than 2%. Cost effective, now they expect that the end user cost of regnant and ships consumables per sample to continue to decline from less than 500 in 2020 to approximately 100 per sample in 2023, and they're fast. Sapphire generates over 4,400 gigabase pairs of information per day. Now, there's a Sapphire instrument itself, which is a single mole molecule imager that includes high-performance optics, automated samples, loading based on machine learning algorithms, computational hardware, and control, softwares the sapphire ship is a, the consumable that the package nano ship arrays for the dna linearization it is in the current form each sapphire ship has three flow cells containing approximately 120,000 nano channels that are roughly 30 nanometers wide and then you got the prep kits and everything in between data solutions etc and then we can move on a little bit towards institutional buyers from an institutional buyer's point of view you get to see that they are a bit still bullish in March. We're talking, we're talking probably around 20, 21,000 shares added on there. Current assets managed, etc. In March, you're probably looking almost at 100,000 shares added. Now, things aren't looking the most bullish in that sense in terms of what you're looking into institutional buyers, but it looks a little bit mixed. I mean, 2021, still a lot of people have added BNGO that would have not added it in 2020. And taking a look into some of the financial results here, in terms of the, let's say, quarterly in terms of income, they burn around somewhere around eight to ten million dollars a quarter. So they did raise around three hundred and thirty-five million dollars. So that will keep them afloat for a while. The current cash is around forty million dollars from December, and you add to that three hundred thirty-five based on the SEC filing we did receive earlier. So that will come up somewhere around three hundred and seventy million. Now, with total assets here, if you add 60 to that 335, you're almost coming up towards the 400 million mark. Total liabilities around 25, so let's say 380. Going back statistics, you're looking into the price over book of being 30.59. That's not updated because of the number of cash, but I'm not sure if the current market cap is outdated with the outstanding numbers. Again, price over sales and price over book might be a little bit too high, but it's trading on an intrinsic value that it will be very successful in the future. So let's move on towards technical analysis. Now, just keep in mind that some of technical analysis might look a little bit too bearish because the market has been sliding and really beating up growth value stocks like this one. And so what we're seeing here on the MACD is that it attempted a positive reversal around the 7th of April. It got rejected and going on towards that negative reversal. We're looking at the power of that negative reversal. The ADX is sitting at somewhere around 34, showcasing that this is actually a strong negative trend that you're sliding downwards on. 10 SMA is above the 30 May, but the trading action zone there where positive reversals are likely is very slim. It's between the 782 and a 701. 
Currently, it's bullish until it reaches the 366, where it's the last trend between the 200 SMA there. Um, if a 200 SMA does break down below, I don't know what will be the saving grace for this one, but we'll get a look into supports and resistances in a second. Current William percent R, or similar to the RSI, shows that it's highly oversold here, and momentum shows that it's negative 206, it's not positive momentum, so let's take a look into the moving average band. And we see that it, ha it has been having a lot of trouble with the moving average bands. It did break somewhere around back in February, where it slipped down below, bounced a little bit back on the Bollinger Bands, and continued to go downwards on the bottom of the moving average band. Now that bottom is between the 753 and 678, followed by the Bollinger Band level at 584. Now currently, Stochastic Fast and Stochastic Slow doesn't show us much that might be useful to us, but perhaps saying that this might be an interesting point to look where the next support is, just for balances. So if we were to go up towards the 1569 level, and going all the way down towards the 43 cents, it's gone a long way from there, and you're looking into the next support on the Fibonacci retracements being the four bucks level. Significant resistances, one which was a support that was broken on Friday, 623, 804, 985, 1242, and 1570. Now, or 1569. Now, if we were to look into price line action just in general, we see a very strong support currently sitting at 535. And then below there, you're looking into 473, and then 393 it starts breaking apart here around 256 and down towards the 146 now significant resistances another strong one at the 608 level here and then above there you're looking into the 702 and then the 768 841 and then jumping up to 964 and then up to 1063 going upwards to 11 bucks and 1254 followed by 1379 comes to the question to ed what do you think about this one well it does look in terms of a chart that it is going backwards where it came from perhaps going to accumulate somewhere around this region similar to this region around the three bucks to four five bucks which is not a bad thing because the price over book is a lot overvalued and the price over sales however I think that a lot of people are just brushing and got used to the news, right? Yeah, Sapphire is amazing, but show us the books. You've been raising a lot of money. You tend to raise perhaps another $350 million from for the public on in terms of shares. But what about revenue? Is this model going to be sustainable? And that's a lot of questions that are probably creating that hesitancy. Price over sales is a lot less. We need to we need perhaps a commercialization team. Do we have a commercialization team? Announce that you're making a commercialization team. Announce that you're pushing in for sales. It's not just about developing a product. You have a product. Cool. It's good. Sell it. And that's what a lot of people might be having hesitancies on in this level. What do you think about the sticker? Make sure to mention down in the comments below. Share, subscribe, and like. Have a wonderful day. Now, if you made it this far into the video, I do recommend that you go ahead and join our Discord server. There's a lot of amazing folks in here. Uh, we do a lot of discussions here into the trading floor throughout the day. A lot of people are in there and we do ask questions. You can ask me uh, any question you would like on there. We do post research and DDs and we hold weekly uh, chat sessions. And we also do have a lounge in there. So make sure to actually join that and join the fun there. Have a wonderful day and a good one.